You know? John 6 verse 51. John 6 verse 51. Okay, let me yes, please. 6 verse 51. Read the word of God. Says, I am the living bread. Amen. Which came from the heaven from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, Amen. which I will give for the life of the world. Amen. What was Jesus saying then? He's the living bread. He's the bread that feeds you. He's the bread that encourages you. He's the bread that gives you eternal life. Life eternal. Do you understand? He said, I sanctify myself. Sanctify yourself in the word of God. Eating this word of God, eating this bread, my Lord. It keeps you alive. It keeps you alive. It moves you in spirit. It gives you, like I said, internal life. So he's the bread of life. And there can be, there's no other bread as pleasant as Jesus. So we as Christians, if you really want to build a relationship with God, eat of this bread. He said, break the bread. Continue. Do this in remembrance of me. Break the bread. Keep listening to my words. Though I'm not here physically, I am with you by your side, spiritually. If you want me to be near you, keep breaking this bread. Keep eating this bread. Keep feeding on this bread. Share the bread with your children, your friends at school. Everywhere. We need this bread. Amen? Amen. And further ways to build our relationship with God and building this temple is through praying. Please go to Matthew 21, 13, please. It's through praying. Praying is very important. Honestly, praying is very important. Matthew 21, 3. 13, 13, 21, 13. Jesus, God. Praying and fasting. Pray. And said to them, What is written in the scripture that God said, My temple will be called the house of prayer? Amen. For you are making it good. Remove out of the teeth. Oh, my Lord. Please read that again. Someone give her. Amen. And he said to them, it is written in the scripture that God said, my temple will be called a house of prayer. Look. For you are making it a hold of, of the thief. Amen. What is God saying? My house shall be called the house of prayer. God wants you to pray. Do you know what prayer does? Okay, let me share a little story. You know, the yellow page, right? This is how it is. When you, you know the yellow page you open, you find a number, then you add a number, right? That's how praying is. That's how the Bible is. You know, remember, disciples, you want to build a relationship with God. You read. So you read, open the Bible. And you find certain scriptures. The pastor says it's very important to pray with what we the word of God. So you open the scriptures. And you find certain words. And then we, you know, when you find the, the word of God, you go down. This is what happens when you pray to God. When you pray to God, you kneel down, you begin to pray, whatever it is you do. The moment you open that Bible, the moment you open your mouth to pray, God is on the other side. He picks up the phone. He says, what is my son going to say to me now? My son is ready to communicate with me. And the more you're praying, the more you're speaking to God, you're hearing. Remember, Daniel said to Daniel, I heard your words. But was Daniel picked up the phone. I mean, God picked up the phone. He was on the other side hearing Daniel. Daniel did not know. Daniel, he said, I heard your words and I've come for your words. So when you open the Bible, when you open your mouth to pray to God, you are speaking to God. You are letting God know your problems. You are not speaking in vain. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. My house shall be called the house of prayer. Prayer builds you up. Prayer lifts you up. Prayer encourages you. Once when I was going through fasting and praying, my Lord, I was so weak. I did not know what to do. I couldn't even stand. Honest, I couldn't even stand. But I said to myself, God, because I said to myself, I was going to pray when I fast for an extended time. I said, God, if you don't study me, I give up. I'm going to go in that preach and take that food and eat. That's what I said. So I went. I went. And I was very weak. And I went in behind, in, inside my room and locked the doors. And I just closed my eyes. You know, I could not stand to pray. So I just said that. I was just speaking to God. He's on the other side listening to my phone call. Say, my son is ready again. He's here for me again. What is he going to request of me? So that happened. As I, was, I was just praying a little. God, please give me the strength. God do this. The Bible says strength and honor are in his sanctuary. Strength and honor are in his sanctuary. He's going to strengthen you if you just go in his presence. I said, I, I sat down with my legs crossed because I couldn't even stand. Honestly, my God, fasting and praying is very, oh Lord. So that's how I happened. And as I, I was doing that, 
as I walked outside, I was more strengthened than I ever than I, than I came inside. What happened? The spirit was active. Praying activates the Holy Ghost. Praying lifts up the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? That's how it is. And another way of building a relationship with God is through fasting. Please go to John 4, verse 23, please. To 20, 24. No, it's very important that we pray. How many of you speak to your parents once a week? Oh my Lord, we don't do that because, you know, <laughs> there are consequences. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's how it is. Pray, you have to speak to God. Let God know your problems. He said, casting all your cares out to Him, for He cares. Give your things, your problems to God. God, I'm struggling in my school. What am I going to do? He's going to support you. He's going to help you. He said, I will send the help, the Holy Ghost, to bring to remembrance what I've taught you. Please, John, 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 John 4, please. Verse 23. 23 to 24. For the hour comes, and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Amen. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Amen. God is our spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. See, as we mentioned earlier, fasting and praying, Paul said, I beat my body, I put my body under subjection. Fasting and praying put the body under subjection. The Bible says, the flesh and the spirit are at war against each other. So the more you fast, the more you pray. You are, you're giving the spirit more power, more energy. And it says, we worship him in truth, in his spirit. Fasting and praying allows you to be activated in spirit. So when you pray to God, he's ready to answer. When you pray to God, he's there waiting for you. Pray makes fasting and praying. Fasting and praying puts the body puts the body. The Bible says, decrease me that you may increase in me. It decreases you. That Christ may increase in you. So you are as one with Father. You are, one, you are, you are as one with, with, with the Lord. So it makes you, you know, have a greater communication with the Lord. Do you know what I'm saying? Fasting, fasting, fasting is a very important thing that we are all required to do. You want to build your relationship with God. You rely on food sometimes. But why not go through fasting and pray to see if you rely on God or God or for which one are you going to rely on? You want to build a relationship with God, go through fasting and pray. Fasting and prayer is very important. You know, it's very important. I was through fasting and prayer also. You know, I didn't know. The first, let's say I went for 10, 10 days. The first three or two days, I was relying on food. I always wanted to fast. You know, I was just thinking, oh my God, when is this going to finish? When is this going to finish? When is this going to finish? But the day was, let's say eight more days was left. And so I said to myself, if I keep thinking like this, I'm going to give up. I'm honestly not going to finish this. So I said, I decided to rely on God now. Remember, fasting and prayer makes you do it. You know, it, 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 it makes you one with one with God. So I decided I'm going to rely on God. And I was, I was seeing, I was testing God. I was saying, okay, let's see if, he's, if my strength truly comes from God. So that is how it was. I was really weak. But like I told you, whenever I go into the press, I was still going to school, all those things. And I have assignments when I think usually too much. You know, I can't cope. I, I'm really weak. I become really weak. So I, I decided to depend on God. Fasting and praying allows you to depend on God, to build a relationship with God, to be more active in the Holy Ghost. So that is how with me. I depend, the more I rely on God every day, my strength will become, I'll become stronger every day. I'll become stronger every day, I'll become stronger. At the end of the week, I didn't even feel like eating. Why? I was as one with God. This is the kingdom of heaven. It's not a matter of bread, eating bread and, bread and meat and all that stuff. It's not a matter of meat and all that stuff. It's not a matter of that. It's working with God, being true, worshiping Him in truth in His spirit. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so, as believers, we are really encouraged, you know, to continue to study the Word of God, to mature in Christ. Because if we don't have this knowledge, we won't tell it to show us a proof. If you don't know about God, God truly will not use you. Do you understand? Go to Galatians 4, please. Galatians 4. You know, Studying the word of God is very important. It's, you have to study it to show yourself the proof. When your friend asks you a certain question, how are you going to answer if you don't know about God? Galatians 4 verse, find out. Galatians 4 verse. Try 6, please. If there's 6. And because ye are sons, 
God has sent forth the Spirit. Galatians 1, please. Full verse 1. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Galatians 4, verse 1. Galatians 4, verse 1. Oh, 4, verse 1. Amen. Galatians 4, verse 1. Okay. Now I say that the head, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Two and another version. Now I mean that the head, as long as he is minor, is no different from a slave, though he is owner of everything. Okay? Verse 2, please. 2. Instead, he is placed under the care of guidance and servant managers until the time set for them by the Father. Amen. Remember, our title for this year is Empowered to Occupy. So most of us, God has already empowered us. He has already given us the gifts, the talents, everything. But if you don't study, you're always going to be a baby. That is, oh my Lord. You're always going to be a baby if you don't study him. If you don't acquire the word of God, you're not going to move forward in life. All your possessions. The say, the Bible says, the power of life and death is in the tongue. You will not go to speak life in any situation when you face challenges. You always be crying to God, God, why, God, why, God, why? Instead of remembering what God's words, instead of remembering God's words, God says, Psalm 46, verse 10, be still on your God. So when you face challenges, because you don't know about these words, obviously you're going to cry to God. You're going to murmur to God. Moses, Moses said to God, oh God, God, oh my Lord. <laughs> he said, God, I am eloquent. I think Exodus 4, please. He said, God, I am eloquent. I cannot speak. And God said to him, what is that in your hands? What is that in your hands? He said, a rod. He said, take it. What was God saying? I have given you all these things. You have my word. You don't even know it. Oh my Lord, Calabash. Exodus 4, please. God had already prepared him. God had already given already give him everything. But he didn't know what was in his hands. He didn't know what was in his So God says, pick my words. Throw the staff to the ground. If you don't study the word of God, you will never know who you are. You will never know what you can do. Exodus 4, please. It's 4 verse 1, please. Exodus 4. Then Moses answered the Lord. But supporting the Israelites do not believe me, and we will not listen to what I say. What should I do if they say that you did not appear to me? Please continue, please. So the Lord answered him, What are you holding? Thank you, Amen. Walking sticky and Kali Bosha. The Lord said, Chew it on the ground. Mm -hmm. When Moses threw it down, it turned into a snake, and he ran away from it. Amen. Thank you. Stop there, please. You see. Moses had something powerful in his hands. God was always with him. He did not know. God was already, always telling him, when you're facing challenges, when you don't know what to do for your assignments, come to me. Lift up my words. Pray to me. Fast. Speak to me. Hear my words. But Moses did not know these things. He did not know the importance of all these things. So God, he started, he started and that's what most of us do. Sometimes I do myself. I complain to God when he said, do these things. He said, oh, I said, God, why? Why me? Why this? Why that? But God said, what is that in your hands? You see what happens when you read the word of God? The more you study the word of God, the more you build a relationship with God. The Bible says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. God is always going to be there holding your hand. He said, I am far and both near. I am near to those who. Do you understand? Know He's near to you. He said, lift up the word. Is that in your hands? You have my words. You have studied all this time. You still don't know? You've heard sermons. You've heard pastor preach. You've heard prophets prophesy. But yet you still don't know what is in your hands. See the importance of the word of God? Read the word of God. Listen to the word of God. And in any situation you're facing, you will speak in life. He said, I've given you both choice, life or death. Do you struggle now? Or do you choose life? Amen? Amen. Amen. So that's the importance of having acquiring the word of God. Because if you don't have the word of God within you, Oh my Lord, when temptation comes, it's going to sweep your feet. Please go to generation, Genesis 4, please. Genesis 4, verse 7. You know? 
it's important that you have the word of God with you. Remember, Paul, David said, I have the word, that word that I read in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Genesis 4, verse 7. He said, Behold, sin is crouching at the door. Genesis 4, verse 7, please. Genesis 4, verse 7, please. If thou doest what? Come here, my God. Amen. Shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not what? Sin lieth at the door. Mm -hmm. And unto thee shall be his desire. And Amen. thou shalt look through and thou shalt rule over him. Amen. See, if you do well, if you listen to me, if you stay under your pastor, if you read my words, if you, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, if you do all these things, those things come, they will not have effect on you. Do the devil come knocking your door, you will sit down and I will go and take care of him for you. Do you understand? But if you do not do these things, when temptation comes, oh my Lord, it will sweep your feet. When temptation comes, you will fall into it. When struggle comes, you will start saying, God, why, why, why? When all these things come, when you see your friends being blessed, you say, God, why am I not blessed? Why is it that they have these things? You don't know me yet. You don't have no relationship with me. Remember, as long as the heart is a child, all these things, you will always have it, but you will not, you will not be able to use it. So you see, it's important that you build your relationship with God because you can overcome temptation. Amen. You speak life into the situation. You are more prayerful. You are more active in the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost that guides you. The Bible says in, in, in Proverbs 23, verse 26, My son, give me your heart and keep your eyes on my ways. When you give God your heart, he will keep your eyes on his ways. So you will not be moving left or right. But you are more focused. Amen? Amen. He directs your steps. He says, uphold me on your path that my feet may not slip. Uphold me on your path. He will put you on his ways. So when this comes, when someone is pushing, you will not be moved. You will be made strong in Christ. Temptation has no power over you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you see, and it's very important for this. And if you don't build yourself in, in the word of God, my God, you are more likely to struggle. You are more likely to struggle to achieve things in life. Go to Hag Haggai 1 verse 2, please. I mean, Corinthians 3 verse 11, please. Corinthians 3 verse 11, please. Jesus. Oh, my God. Hey, wow, wow, wow. Ah. <laughs> oh, Father, my Father. Hey, Baba. 